What's up guys, we're back with NBA action here by popular demand going over the whole slate for Thursday, April 11th. The MLB games haven't all finished. We had a little bit of a rough time. We did cash our biggest bet of the day on San Diego minus one and a half. That netted us plus 140, so it felt good to hit that one, but not a good day overall. The Dodgers lost straight up. Toronto lost. They didn't even keep that thing close. And we saw Houston against the Royals. They scored a ton of runs in that game, so not a banner day for us on the MLB. Let's hope we can bounce back here. We're excited to get back into basketball here after doing a few straight days of the MLB in a row. I appreciate everyone hitting that like button and showing your support for the work we're doing here every single day if you're new take a second and subscribe to the channel it's 100 free and can keep you from missing out on these picks over 70 percent of our viewers aren't subscribed i know we can do a lot better than that these videos are sponsored by stumpthespread.com click the link in the description to go over there and join our free email list and check out our top confidence plays on all the major sports brought to you by our entire team of experts comment below with all the bets you're looking at today and we will give you our best advice on all of them we respond to absolutely every single comment so let us know anything you want to say about my picks these videos or any anything you see here. As always, our final picks will be in the pinned comment down below. Now let's get into our first game of the day, the Chicago Bulls going on the road to take on the Detroit Pistons. The Bulls come into this game riding a two-game losing streak. They've actually lost three of their last four overall, including a loss to the Atlanta Hawks. Not a super good look, but they're currently a game and a half up on the Hawks, so it looks like the Bulls can feel at least semi-confident about having home court advantage in that first play-in game matchup. In terms of health, we see the Bulls have both the Sumu and Alex Caruso listed as day-to-day. -day. It's going to be pretty important that they have both of those guys out here, even going up against the Lowly Pistons. These are big pieces of their rotation. And we see Caruso, their best perimeter defender. He's listed as probable with his ankle complaint, so I think he'll be out there for sure. But we have to keep an eye on Desumu coming up to game time to see whether or not he's actually going to be out here. The Bulls are struggling a little bit right now. There's no way around that. They're only 3-7 and seven over their last 10 games. This squad's going to have an extremely tough time making it out of the play-in tournament, even if they play great managed to get a win against Atlanta or something like that, they're going to have a hard time coming away with either one of those playoff spots. Although they definitely feel like they have a chance even going up against teams like the Heat or the 76ers or possibly the Pacers or Magic if they end up falling down there. There's a lot of movement still possible in the Eastern Conference, guys. It's going to be very exciting to watch these last few games here. A lot of moving and shaking can still go on. Just looking back at their last few games, the Bulls have not had a great time. They did get a 108-100 to win over the New York Knicks, so that was a solid win, but they weren't able to back that up in their next game. They got blown out by the Orlando Magic. Then they lost to the Knicks, so that's not exactly a great look, and they really haven't been finding much success against solid teams this year. I mean, they had a three-point win over the Portland Trailblazers recently, so like, that is not exactly like tearing it up level territory. They're going up against the Detroit Pistons, though, so they have to feel fairly good about their chances in this game. The Pistons have now lost five in a row. They're not doing great. They're kind of tanking out the end of the season here. They are playing their main pieces a little bit here down the stretch, but it's very clear that this team is doing everything they can to lose games right now. Looking at their injury report is going to be very important. we got to see whether we're going to have Cade and Jaden Ivey and Jalen Duran out there. Right now, Cade Cuttingham is on that injury report. They have him listed as questionable for this game against the Bulls. He's got a knee issue ongoing, so I don't know if that's a real knee issue or if that's just them trying to keep him out of the game. But regardless, we're not feeling super confident about his availability in this game. And when you look at the spread in this one, you see it's the Pistons plus 9.5. It sounds like the odds makers aren't super optimistic about his availability in this game either. The Pistons haven't been having a good time lately. They did win a rock fight of a game against Washington. That was their last win six games ago. So not exactly pleasant going here for Pistons fans or coaches or players. It's really the whole coaching situation is not looking amazing. So it'll be interesting to see what this team does in the offseason. But looking at the numbers for this game, the Pistons are plus nine and a half, like I said. And that is a kind of big number. Like you would think this team could keep this matchup relatively close. But looking at the season series here, we see that the Pistons are actually up two to one in the season series, which is pretty impressive. Their last win came back on February 27th, so not that long ago, but in that game, we definitely think we'll have seen the Pistons play their better players. Jaden Ivey had a decent game in that one. We saw Cunningham. He put up 26 points. Just in general, we saw Duran score 14 points. In general, overall, the Pistons played really well in that game, and they were playing their full roster. If they're playing their full roster in this game, if we see Cade listed as available for this game, probably going to have to wait pretty close to game time to get that information, but if they do and the spread stays close to this 9.5, we definitely like the Pistons. If we find out that Cade and one other key piece are sitting out, we definitely like the Chicago Bulls. We see Chicago only 
only 20 and 18 against the spread on the road. Detroit only 18 and 20 against the spread at home. So not exactly huge leans, not a ton to go over for that. But we're definitely going to take a peek at the over-under in this game. We see it's at currently at 217.5, so not a huge number, but not a tiny number, especially when you have two teams that are a little bit at least offensively challenged. We see that Chicago is slightly an over team when playing on the road. They're 21-16-1 to the over on the road. And we see the Pistons are an under team when playing at home. They just don't produce that much offense. And right now, just looking at how the Pistons are playing, they only scored 102, 103, and 90 points over their last three games. And those were not against a league competition, so I don't think we're going to see them put up a ton of points against the Chicago Bulls. I think this will be a relatively low scoring game. So if you want to take a taste of the Pistons plus nine and a half, even not knowing whether or not Cade's going to be playing, I guess I can't argue with that too much, but we're going to be on the under. I think that's my favorite lean on this game, but I'm not going to say this is actually a lock or anything like that. This is just a spot we think has some moderate value. Next up, we're looking at the New York Knicks going on the road to take on the Boston Celtics. The Knicks come into this game fresh off of a win over the Bulls. They won two in a row and three of their last four overall, and they're doing their absolute best to try and establish themselves, trying to lock in that three seed at least, if not catch the Milwaukee Bucks for the two seed in the East. The Knicks have been one of the better stories this season overall. We've seen Jalen Brunson absolutely emerge as a superstar, and right now this team is looking pretty healthy given that they're not going to have Julius Randle for the rest of the season and stuff like that. We've seen Hartenstein really emerge as a great player. We've seen Mitchell Robinson come back and look close to his old self. OG Ananobi is back in the lineup after his ongoing elbow issue. Like, they really have to hope that he's going to be back for a good long while, but he's played in three straight games now and he played really really well against the Chicago Bulls he scored 24 points in that game so they can hope that their best defender and one of their solid knockdown outside shooters is back and ready to be productive on a night-to-night -night basis so the Knicks being healthy in this one has to make them feel really really good the fact they're not going to have one of their better players here for the playoff run though that has to be a little bit of a disappointment for sure and they're going to need all the help they can get going up against the Boston Celtics who come into this game they really don't have anything to play for right now they've got that top seed in the east locked up they have had it locked up for quite a while. The question for the Celtics right now really is where is their motivation level at? I don't think it's super high. We did just see them lose to the Milwaukee Bucks in kind of a embarrassing performance overall and their injury report is riddled with guys likely to sit this game out. We see Drew Holiday, Jalen Brown, Jason Tatum, and Porzingis all here on the injury report. We also see Al Horford on there. Right now it's looking like Drew Holiday has to be celebrating with that extension coming through. There's not a ton of news on whether or not he's going to be suiting up for this game, but resting him, having him healthy for the playoffs is definitely going to be a huge priority. Jalen Brown is listed as questionable due to his left hand sprain, so we don't know if he's going to be playing in this game either. Tatum is questionable with a bruised knee, so we don't know if he's going to be in this one. And Porzingis, this guy, he's dealing with a hamstring injury apparently, but probably they just want to put this guy in bubble wrap and make sure that he stays healthy here for a postseason run. Looking at the numbers this game, we see the Celtics are minus one. Don't really love the Celtics in this spot, especially when we don't know who's all going to be playing, so we're not going to really be able to lock this play in until closer to game time. We have a better idea who's actually going to be available for them, but if they end up sitting several guys, we definitely like the Knicks in this spot. New York is 21-17-2 and two against the spread on the road this season. The Celtics are 21-16-1 and one against the spread when playing at home, but we don't really know who they're going to actually play in this game. The Celtics don't have any incentive to be winning games right now. Like, they just want to be healthy and make sure that they're fully ready, geared up to go here for a deep playoff run. They are expecting to compete for a championship. The Knicks have not gotten a win against the Celtics this season. They're 0-4 in the season series. They've got this one last chance to get a win. I think we see them take advantage of it here. I'm definitely going to be on the Knicks minus one unless we get news that every single Celtics player is going to be playing, and that is not what I expect to hear. Looking at the over-under for this game, we see it it's 212 and a half, so not a very big number. We see the Knicks slightly an over team on the road, which is pretty interesting, and the Celtics, they're a straight up 19 19 over under team and playing at home. So no trends for us there. Looking at how these teams have been playing lately, I tend to lean slightly towards the over. The Knicks have really shown that they're capable of some offensive outbursts. There's no doubt about it. Like they can put up some points in a hurry. If you catch DiVincenzo on a hot shooting night or anything like that, we haven't really seen the same from the Celtics when they're playing super shorthanded. So the over under isn't something I'm going to be super interested in this one. Gun to my head. If you really, really want me to bet this, I guess you give me a small taste of the over, but it's not going to be one of my bigger leans today. Next up, we got the Houston Rockets going on the road to take on the Utah Jazz. Houston comes into this game. Their season is effectively over, but they just got a very solid win over the Orlando Magic. Not something I really expected to see. But despite being eliminated from the play-in tournament contention, they still seem determined to actually like have a decent end here to their season. The Rockets are an exciting young team. I expect big-ish, at least, things from them in the future, and they've got exciting young players. There's no reason this team won't mature and be even better coming back next season and have a chance to work their way into that play-in tournament or even into the playoffs 
playoffs, just into that playoff picture overall. It was sad to see Elfaren Sengun go down this season. Not getting to see him here at the end of the year is kind of disappointing, but what are you going to do? It sounds like he'll be easily ready to go for next year, so that's pretty good news. They're going to need to play relatively well here going up against the Utah Jazz, who come into this game riding a 13-game losing streak. Utah is tanking things out hard here at the end of the season. We see Colin Sexton and John Collins are listed out for this game, along with Chris Dunn, Jordan Clarkson, and Walker Kessler, so they are not exactly trying to put their most competitive team out there on the floor. We won't be seeing Laurie Markkinen or anybody like that. This squad is tanking things out hard, and you can't really blame this franchise for doing this. It's in their best interest. They're trying to improve their draft odds as much as they can, although this is not a very loaded draft, so it's a little bit like... Yeah, you're tanking, but like, what are you really going to get here at the end? You never know, though. Drafts like this can often turn up some decent players. So we're really not going to throw this draft under the bus too hard. But looking at the Jazz right now, there's not a lot to feel positive about. The spread in this game is Utah plus six. They've been a good against the spread team at home, but I really don't trust them at all right now. That's not a very big number. Houston has not been a good against the spread team when playing on the road. And that's something that's kind of really carried along here for quite a while. They did get a solid win over the Thunder when playing in OKC, but that was several weeks ago. So we're not going to read too much into that. This spread isn't one I'm super interested in, guys. I mean, I think there's some value on the Rockets minus six here. I think they could win this game pretty convincingly against the like D squad of the Utah Jazz. And if you shop around a little little bit. I bet you can find Houston minus five and a half. So give me a taste of the Rockets in this one. We also will take a glance at the over-under in this game. It's at 226 and a half. That seems like an awful lot of points. We see the Jazz, this, these numbers aren't super relevant for them anymore since they're not even playing like 90% of their starters, but they're 21, 18, and one to the over at home. Houston's a 50-50 over-under team when playing on the road. Not going to be super interested in the over-under in this game. I'm definitely more on Houston minus five and a half or six, whatever you can find out there. But give me a tiny, tiny taste of the under in this game. I don't think Utah will score very many points, so that's really my only lean on the over-under, but definitely give me a taste of Houston in this one. Next up, we've got the Golden State Warriors going on the road to take on the Portland Trail Blazers. Golden State is looking to close their season out strong here and continue winning games. There's a chance they could pass up the Lakers here and get themselves into that nine seed, and there's some outside chances with a bunch of losses from the Pelicans, Suns, or Kings to where they could move up even higher than that. We're not really going to get into all of that. It's kind of a mess right now in the bottom of the Western Conference, but the Warriors have reason to be playing hard and coming into this game, they're playing really well. They destroyed the Lakers in that game where Anthony Davis weirdly sat out. We didn't really see that coming, but we were on the Warriors in that game anyway, so that worked out for us. And Golden State's really just been playing their best ball here at the end of the season. We've seen their defense come together. The offense starts to look a little bit better right now. And Chris Paul has been playing well. We've seen Klay Thompson knocking down the shots. Like, there's a lot, a lot to feel good about in this game. The Warriors do come into this one kind of in a letdown spot after an incredibly hot shooting night. And we see that Draymond Green is listed as questionable due to a right knee contusion. I think we're pretty likely to see him play in this game. Although if they wanted to have him sit out one last game here in the regular season, obviously going up against the Portland Trail Blazers is a pretty good spot to do that. The Blazers come into this game. They've lost two in a row. They're not exactly putting the most competitive team out there. We see Scoot Henderson. He's trying to work his way through this and like trying to uh, have a better ending to a season that has not really been what a lot of us Scoot Henderson fans thought it could be. So not a lot of positives to find for Portland right now. I mean, I guess DeAndre Ayton's been playing a little bit better here at the end of the year. This squad, this is not a starting level NBA team. They've got Anthony Simons listed as out, Matisse Thibel's out. Like, they're not exactly trying to win games right now. The question is, even despite the fact they're not trying to win games, Will they keep this thing relatively close? Portland's plus 13 and a half in this one. They're 17, 21, and one against the spread at home, but they're going up against a Warriors team who's playing some of their best ball this season. It is 27 and 13 against the spread on the road and kind of has some sneaky good depth on their roster. Like if we see a bunch of Moses Moody minutes, like we're not going to be sad about that. The guy is a beast. He should be getting a little bit more playing time in there anyway. We see some more Chris Paul minutes, whatever. We could see the Warriors go off for another insane shooting performance. So give me the Warriors minus 13 and a half. It's not going to be one of my bigger plays because it's one of these massive numbers, but their 27 and 13 against the spread on the road number is league best, and there's a reason for that. So looking at the over-under in this game, we see the Warriors are 23 and 17 to the under when playing on the road. That's kind of interesting. We also see Portland is slightly an under team at home, so we'll go ahead and ride with that trend. I don't think the Blazers are going to score many points if the Warriors are actually taking this game seriously. So go ahead and give me the Warriors minus 13 and a half, and you can give me a small taste of the under, but obviously when we're looking at the Warriors to a blowout, we're not exactly thinking there's going to be no offense in this game. We just don't see Portland really able to 
put many balls in the bucket. Next up, we got the New Orleans Pelicans going on the road to take on the Sacramento Kings. This is one of the more intriguing games of the night. This game has massive implications. We see the Pelicans are currently sitting in the sixth seed. The Kings are sitting in the 10th seed. They're two games back of the Pelicans, so the Kings really need to get a win in this game if they want to keep their hopes of moving up the standings alive. The Pelicans won two in a row coming into this game, which snaps a four-game losing streak. So they lost four in a row, then they won two in a row, and those wins came over the Suns. A pretty solid performance and then a 10 point win playing at Portland. Looking at the injury report for the Pelicans, which is obviously very important, right now we see they are looking very, very healthy. We see Najee Marshall is listed as day to day, but other than that, their whole team seems to be relatively healthy. And most importantly, we see Zion, McCollum, Trey Murphy, and Valanchunas all listed as healthy, along with Herb Jones. So this starting lineup is ready to go, ready to run out there and take on the Kings in a game that this team desperately needs to win. Sacramento comes into this game fresh off of a tough seven point loss at Oklahoma City. They've lost some heartbreakers here recently. They had cha their chances in that game. They also lost a one point game at Boston. Not a great look, not against the whole Boston squad. So this team needs to be finding its way right now, needs to be finding some success if they want to get out of that play in tournament. If they end up in that play in tournament, it's going to be a very dangerous place to be. And they are very unlikely to have Malik Monk back, I would at least think. I don't know. I'm not in those meetings, but I can't imagine the guy rushing back from a knee issue. We see Keegan Murray is listed as day to day for this one, but other than that, they're healthy. And I think we can at least kind of expect Keegan Murray to play. Obviously, you're going to want to have him healthy for their play in game or likely play in game at least, but they need to be winning these games right now to try and miss that play in tournament completely. The Kings just in general having to lean very aggressively on Darian Fox and Sabonis. And in this season series, which is pretty interesting to look at here with the year winding down, we saw the Pelicans pretty much dominate. They've gone 4 and 0 in this matchup so far, and that's definitely going to be a big part of our pick in this game. We're going to be on the New Orleans Pelicans plus one playing on the road in this thing. The Pelicans are 22-16-1 against the spread when playing on the road. The Kings are only 16-22 and against the spread at home. Guys, when you see me put lock in the comments or lock in the thumbnail, this is what I'm talking about. We're going to be on the New Orleans Pelicans plus one in this one. This is my lock of the day. So don't get in there in the comments saying, where's your lock at? This is it. Looking at the over-under in this game, we see it's a 218 and a half. We see that the Pelicans are a pretty solid under team when playing on the road. The Kings are a pretty solid over team when playing at home. So it's kind of hard to get a gauge on that. I do think we'll see something of a playoff atmosphere in this one. So if you wanted to take the under, that'd be okay with me. But we're not too interested in that. We are going to be slamming it here on the Pelicans plus one. I think they find a way to get the win against a team they've had nothing but success against this season. That's all the games we have for today, guys. Hit that like button for good luck on all your bets and subscribe if you're new. Let me know in the comments any questions you have on today's slate. Thanks for watching. You can click the link in the description to check out stumpthespread.com and we'll see you guys tomorrow for more sports betting action.